This is, this is, this is. And we're back, everyone. Welcome to a brand new episode of the podcast, episode 516. Please call in for your voicemails. It's going to be an epic episode. Uh, we'll get to a few voicemails today, but first we're going to talk about PX Mecca. I'm talking about Bremerton, Washington. We just did two hometown shows at the Admiral Theater. We'll talk all about that. We'll talk about our trip to Portland uh, to support No Effects for their last show in Portland. We'll talk about that. And we'll talk a little bit about the bass toss and um, something happened. So we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, but first, if you want to call in, leave a voicemail. Please call in about your experience in Bremerton. Uh, we're going to talk about Bremerton food as well on this episode. So did you eat in Bremerton? What did you think of the food? Where did you go? Anything like that I want to hear about. Uh, of course, I want to hear about your experience at the show as well. So call in the number is 360-830-6660 and that's it that's the number 830 sorry 360-830-6660 call in let us know your thoughts uh did you see us recently on any of these shows um we'll get to it all right uh what else um if you want to submit to music monday we're going to be doing that soon there's already a ton of submissions so maybe hold off a little bit but when you do submit you post on the mike herrera podcast facebook group it's a private group but it's free to join join the group give me a youtube link um that's it so we'll be we'll be continuing i appreciate you guys thanks for coming thanks for listening if you didn't come to the last weekend uh our shows in bremerton that's cool hey not everybody can make it if everybody could make it we'd play in a stadium <laughs> so <laughs> so uh thank you for uh for listening thank you for listening to the podcast let's get right to it all right Let's get to it. We're going to talk about Bremerton. We're going to talk about the shows. So June 28th and 29th in Bremerton, Washington, MXPX played two sold-out shows at the Admiral Theater. It was billed MXPX in the Ataris. But Friday, late in the day, in fact, we were already done with our sound check, and I found out right when the Ataris were supposed to be loading in that the Ataris weren't going to make it. The Ataris were there, the, the all the guys, but Chris Rowe was not there. And so he was sick. I didn't really know why or what happened, but I just knew he wasn't going to make it. And hopefully he would make it the next day. So I made a video. We posted it on our stories and we let everybody know. And, and when, when people showed up, we actually got our good friends, the Fibs, to open the show. And they're a local punk band, rock band. Um, I've gone to see their local shows plenty of times. And Dale Yob, the original, uh, not the original guitar player, one of the guitar players of the Acuties now plays drums in the fibs and he's he's played in the fibs the whole time he's always been the drummer um but people don't really know they don't make that connection um because the cooties are not a band that most people really pay attention to and and for those of you that don't know the cooties are a side project that mxpx started tom and i um back really in, in the very beginning back when we were still in high school we were mxpx was doing pretty well but but we decided let's start a side project called the cooties so we ended up touring at least one tour with mxpx oh, we we're opening for ourselves um it's always fun but uh i only missed one show <laughs> i was in san antonio texas and i was with a girl and this was early early days uh first couple years of touring and um i was i was uh just fell in love with this girl in Texas, not, not my wife who I'm married to now, but, um, and we, uh, we were busy just talking. We weren't doing anything crazy, but like uh, at the moment, but we were talking and we were down by the river in San Antonio. And I looked, uh, we didn't have cell phones at those times. We didn't have, you know, I didn't even wear a watch. I don't think so. I didn't know what time it was. And basically I was hanging out with her and then I went back to the venue and they're like, and the cooties were on stage and i'm like oh 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 i'm late <laughs> i run up and literally like there's only time for like a couple more songs and then the shit sets over so the guys had like covered for me you know we weren't really prepared for that but that was uh 
that was really the only time I ever missed a show, a set. And that was the Cooties. I feel, felt terrible. It was the worst thing in the world. It wasn't something that I'm like, well, it's just the Cooties. I was like, at least it's just the Cooties. But that's not something that I, that I would ever take lightly. So back to the show. Uh, we scrambled, we got the fibs, and in order to tell everybody, because I knew people wouldn't really know, they'd be expecting the Ataris and then the fibs come out. So I went and I introed the fibs. And before I did that, I told a story about the Ataris, and I had my daughter Sailor come out, and she sang Linoleum with me, and I played guitar. Um, that was a huge highlight, and she was really nervous. And uh, we, we got it done, and, and uh, the fibs played. Everybody seemed to really enjoy that. And and then MXPX. Friday night, MXPX, we came out. We busted out Friday tonight, as we like to do sometimes. You know, we don't... We, we opened with that song for a season. Um, and now we'll open f with that song now and again. So uh, if it's a Friday night, of course we want, <laughs> we want to open with that song because it's just, like, perfect. But uh, is it too on the nose? I don't know. I uh, just love, I love how that song feels to start. It's triumphant. It's huge. You you get a sense of, okay, this band is big. And, and then we come into this punk rock, skate punk part. Um, so you get all the energy building up, building up, and then boom, and then we just go. How did we make it this far? How did we learn to stay alive? How did my head not separate my body from my mind. It just, like, it's everything you want to experience in a show. If people really listen to those lyrics, it's supposed to mean, it's supposed to take you higher. It's supposed to take you on a different plane of existence. It's Friday tonight. That's what we're trying to do. Now, did we succeed? I don't know. You tell me. Uh, I think, I think it happens for, for some people. Some people that have seen so many shows, maybe they're jaded. You know, we used to play L.A., and it was always the hardest, the hardest market, the hardest crowd to to really, like, make go crazy. And I feel like the last few few years, but especially with the Palladium show last year, uh, no, this year, this year, we played the Palladium this year, uh, sold out the Palladium in, in Hollywood, and that crowd went off, and I was like, this doesn't even feel like an L.A. crowd, because so many people flew in, but... There, it's mostly LA. I mean, that's our biggest market. That's where the most people live. That's where the most people are that know about MXPX. It's definitely our biggest area, I would say. Um, but Bremerton and Seattle, that's that's uh, probably a close third or fourth as far as like our big, big markets. But um, the amount of love we've received the last few shows we've played in Seattle, always selling out. Now in Bremerton, two nights selling out. Um, we're blown away, and, and it was just, it, it was uh, a lot of pressure to, to relieve, and we did. I feel like we did that. Like Friday was a, by no means a perfect show, but it was really tight. It was really good. Had some great moments. Um, we had Ty Vaughn come out as a guest. Ty Vaughn, the, the singer of Broadway Calls. They're a Washington band. They live in Vancouver, Washington, and great dudes, working class guys, always, always grateful to be wherever they are. And it was no different that night. Ty really nailed it. And, and we had a great time hanging with them. So, uh, so Bremerton night one, Friday night, uh, we played, let's, let me look up the set list. Let's talk about it. Um, just a little bit, <clears throat> talk about the set. We'll talk about the food. So we were at the Admiral theater and, uh, we had, we had a deal with them to where we could actually bring more people in. Uh, you know, we had set, that's why we had separate tickets for the balcony and the main floor. Normally they kind of just sell them all together, but this was like very, very strict. Like, okay, if we do this balcony thing, we have to, uh, you know, we have to, you know, keep it separate. We're like, all right, well, okay. If that's, if that's the way it's going to be, then, then that's the way it's going to be. But uh, why am I not finding, I'm looking somewhere else, not finding the set lists. Here we go. Finding these set lists. Um, oh, I know why, because 
I'm on a different computer than I normally would write the set list on. And so I don't have them. But uh, I'm pulling them up. I'm pulling them up right now. I apologize, people. Normally I would be... Okay, let's face it. Normally I would not be ready. <laughs> All right, Friday Tonight. Uh, that's the first song we played. And then we went into, we went into uh, Not Today. Not Today's track one off of Find A Way Home. If you haven't already heard it, where have you been? I can't believe you can't possibly know this podcast and listen to this podcast without hearing Stay Up All Night, Let's Ride, and Not Today. Like those three songs are, are probably our biggest new songs that we have. Um, but Friday Tonight's a fun one. Anyway, so we go Friday Tonight, Not Today, into all of it, which is, you know, for us, we're like, boom, second track off of our self titled album from 2018. Anybody that's been listening the last couple of years knows this song. This is going to slay. And it did. It really rocked. And then uh, we went into some 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 oldie, oldies, oldie but goodies. Tomorrow's another day. Wonder Years. Um, with the Wonder Years, you know, some people call it life in general because I say the words life in general in the in the track. And And to be honest, before the record came out, life in general, this song was called life in general. I think we talk about it in a in a documentary um back in the day and i didn't really like i didn't want this song to be the title track right because this was just like another song on the record it was not a single it was like you know if you if we named our song our, our album chick magnet or move to Brent, you know like, okay it makes sense you know this is the theme of the record or or maybe this is the most popular song on the record, but even doing Chick Magnet wouldn't have worked for us because Chick Magnet was not, it was it was a very different sounding song than most of the songs on the record. So we didn't really want to like, back in those days, and even now, if you name a record after a song, that song is looked at as, it's looked at it a little bit harder. Like, hey, why did they name this, the record this? And they'll look at that song title, Life in General is one and the same. Our lives in general are one and the same, but there's variations. Uh, like, all right, why did they name it that? So, so uh, you know, when we decided, oh my God, we had a, we, can't, we, we need to name this record Life in General. This is what this, this record is about, Life in General. So we needed to name it Life in General. And because of that, that's why we changed the name of Life in General to Wonder Years. And Thomas Nesky came up with that idea because he's like, we, we all both love the Wonder Years. We, we, we grew up watching that show. Uh, it's a TV show for those that, that don't know, but the Wonder Years is a TV show. And we, we, we thought that's kind of a, a, a TV show about life in general. It's about relationships with your teacher, your neighbors, your friends, your parents, your enemies, your bullies. You know, it's like, it's everything. It's life in general. And that's, you know, you, you, you see the cover of our album, Life in General, and it's um, it's a little vignette of a slice of life, a punk rocker, somebody that feels a little on the outs in the world, and then this guy that's, like, accepted by society is bullying the punker, you know, and the punk rock, you know, throwing the punk in the, in the trash can, and, um, you know, that's that's what we wanted to portray. So So there's a lot of, like, thoughts going on whether they're right or wrong i felt like that was good at the time and 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 i still feel i feel that way still today um i feel like it was a good idea to change the name to wonder years and to call the record life and Ch all of those things worked out great um and and i feel like today it's the same thing like we didn't name any song find a way home um but this the album really fits that vibe and the ever passing moment by the way um is another title that there's no song title with the ever passing moment those words as as it but there's some lyrics in i think there's lyrics in in one of the songs that says ever passing moment and it might be um uh, one step closer to life Ever passing moment in my life these days. Yeah, I say ever passing moment somehow. And, and that like struck me as that's what this 
album really encapsulates. So that's kind of how I come up with those. I know I'm not answering questions. I'm just I'm just talking about about uh, songs and and albums. And so we're on Wonder Years here. But then we, you know, we played uh, we played Call Me off of off of the the new album Find a Way Home, and that's one of our the band favorites. We really love playing that song. I love how it starts, drums and guitar, just real real kind of just down and. I can talk and then we can kind of like hype the crowd up a little bit, but really it's, it's a diary song. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a song that's almost written like it's a piece out of my diary. Um, it's, you know, I miss you. It's like a relationship for me. It was like, you know, when, when I was spending a lot of time away from my family doing work and they'd be in Texas or I'd be in, you know, for traveling or something. And there would be days where I haven't talked, hadn't talked to my wife in like three days. Sure. We had texted, but hadn't actually gotten on the phone. And, and that's where, you know, you start thinking about all the things you regret in life. And you think, you know, when you have time alone away from your family, like, I don't know if you guys watch the show alone, there's a new season out. Um, it's in it's in process right now, so you can't watch the whole new season. You have to like kind of wait for the new new episode each week. But it's on the History Channel, and alone is it's a great metaphor for how we all are in, in the world. You know, in our lives is is yes, we all have family, we all have a few friends, maybe, and and maybe you're out there and you're you you're completely alone and you don't have family, you don't have friends. Um, and you know even more than me, but like there are times when the, even the people that do have a support system of people, family, friends, when you're not around them, and how do you how do you act then? You know, can you handle it? Um, I'm not saying you should handle it, but um, you know, I've been watching alone a little bit with the family. My son and I have been watching Band of Brothers, which is a World War II series on HBO um, and just seeing the how people react to extreme situations and when you're all alone some of the things that these people do on the TV show is th they know everything there is to know about survival they can build they can build a shelter they can go hunting and fishing and build a bow and arrow and a, and knit a fishing net a gill net, uh, but the thing they don't they don't really uh, think about is oh I'm I'm all alone, just that existential dread of I'm completely alone. Forget the fact that if you get hurt, you're hours away from a hospital, hours and hours and hours. Uh, but also, you're not going to see your family for. How, who knows how long the better you do the more that weighs on you and the more the better you do in the game the longer you're going to torture yourself that's some psychological torture that people aren't prepared for people are usually prepared more for the physical torture like i prepare myself for a show physically and and even just i think physically by playing and singing physically singing um but some i can tell sometimes when i'm not mentally preparing as well you forget lyrics now and again things like that you know when there's so much stress in your day and then you try to go and do something hard you might not do it as well as as you would do it at home so like when people are at home hunting fishing gathering they're not stressed they're not alone they have at the end of the day that their brain knows that they can go and take a break when your brain doesn't have an end game and end like okay we're gonna do this for two hours and then we're done your brain can handle that it understands that when you go on a show like alone you don't know when you're gonna be done you're gonna you have to outlast everyone else but you can't talk to them you don't see them you don't know until the game's already done that psychologically is really really hard on people uh, it would be hard on me absolutely um so getting back to this i don't getting getting off a little bit but but for me it's like with call me being being away from my family 
I, I can see the toll that that must take on people that aren't used to that. I've done this my whole life. When my, my kid was, my first kid, Sailor, she, when she was a baby, I toured half the year. You know, I was gone for like a month or more at a time doing tumble down mainly. And it was, it was a way to pay bills, you know, because at the time MXPX was not as busy. Um, we were just, you know, Tom and Yuri just could not spend the time to do it. And that's what led to the all-stars and all that. But like, um, sometimes you just, you can't quite see the forest through the trees. So you have to go one little tree at a time, just take it one time, you know, one at a time. And that's what I felt like I was doing with tumble down was like, I could, I, I could understand how to do a small punk band, but we didn't have management at the time. We didn't have anybody overseeing a big picture and all of those problems in general just led me to go into survival mode and, and that's what we did and, and it worked and it worked and we came out of it stronger than ever. We came out of it. MXPX flourished. Um, the, the all-stars allowed us to, you know, keep the, the name going until Tom and Yuri were ready to spend more time with it. Now they're, you know, they've been back for, well, 10 years about now, uh, 10, 10 or nine or 10 years. They've been strong, strongly back, like full time. Like, okay, we'll do this one, you know, whenever we possibly can. And, um, you know, of course the pandemic was in there as well. So things changed a little bit here and there, but it, it, for me, being an artist, being a musician, being a, entrepreneur whatever you might want to call it like it's all about just keep going just find your way adapt and maintain so um finding that routine and and if it's not working changing that routine you know now and again things need to change in in big ways and in small ways so that that definitely happens so a song like call me comes comes from a very real place um where I'm just missing my family. And, and, and that causes this psychological, um, I don't know. I don't know what you want to call it. It, it, it. These things bloom out. And I'm not saying that's in a, in a flowery way, saying these things just come out, whether you like it or not, when you're, when you're spending a lot more time doing something different, um, when you're spending a lot more time alone inside your head, I've always spent a lot of time alone in my head. I'm here on the podcast talking to you, but um, there's no one behind me. And uh, I'm in my head. I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about this. Sure. I text people. I, I think about this and then I text somebody to like, okay, can you help me get this done? We need to get this done. And that's a lot of what I do. But um, the psychological idea that things never end, that's, that's not good. So, you know, having a set list, there you go. What if, what, you know, you, you have a set list and once you get towards the end, your brain goes, Oh, we're, we're, we're about to be done. Um, that's going to be great, you know? And it's not because you don't enjoy every second of being on stage. Cause I do, but it's also your brain rewards itself for f completing a task. So when I'm finished with this podcast, my brain kind of rewards itself. Like, oh, you you finished something. Is it the most important thing in the world? No, but it's a document of our time in Bremerton at the Admiral Theater. It's going to be, you know, I'm going to talk about Portland. I'm going to talk about more and more about these shows. It's a document, you know. So, I mean, it's nice to just do things. I, I've always been that way, and I've always felt that way about songs. I felt that way about albums. I felt that way about shows, tours, performances, anything that's hard to do, but you still like to do it. You're, you're happy when it's done, you know, and you want to do it again, but you're like, okay, I'm, I, we completed that. So what, what would happen if you went on a ro roller coaster and it's the best roller coaster? You're like, zoom back. Oh my God. Let's go again. Let's go again. All right. All right. Let's go again. Okay, cool. Go again. Woo! That was amazing. That was the best roller coaster ever. I'm good. What if it's like, no, uh, you can't actually stop. We got to go again. You go again. And you're like, all right, all right, that's pretty good. 
we got to go again. Wait, no. Whoa. All right, hold on, hold on. But nope, we got to go again. You get my point. After a while, even something so good that you want it to happen twice becomes hell if you have to keep doing it over and over and over. And I'm very aware of that when it comes to shows and performance and songs and, and everything. You know, it's, it's do the work, take it all in, enjoy the time, make each moment count because if you're just going through the motions, you're going to end up on a roller coaster for all of eternity. So here we go. We go into uh, a bunch of Buffalo songs, another find a way home song. Excuse my French. It's on Friday night. We're still talking Friday night. Um, do a life in general song. We do stay up all night. We do uh, another Buffalo song. We're, I mean, we, of course we play Bremerton, talk about Bremerton a little bit. Um, the reason why we got the key to the city was because of the song moved to Bremerton. And we kind of made a joke, like we should have the key to the city. And we kind of joked about that to somebody in government. And they went to the mayor and to the mayor's office and was like, hey, we should give them the key to the city and use this for a tourist song, or like a tourism song or a program or something. And, and they were like, yeah, we should. <laughs> so Mayor Kerry Bozeman in the mid 2000s uh, or late 2000s uh, gave us the key to Bremerton. So thank you. Thank you, Bremerton. So it's, it's kind of fun to be such a historical part of the area. Um, if we haven't done anything, we've made our mark on our hometown of Bremerton, Washington. So so uh, a lot of songs we play, you know, we did Buildings Tumble off of The Ever Passing Moment. We played Undone that night, which is one of my favorites off of, of uh, the new album, Find a Way Home. Um, and then, uh, Saturday night, well, maybe I won't get to the set list yet. So that's Friday night. We do a meet and greet and I was so amped up. I went home. I got home about one o'clock, something like that. Maybe it was a one thirty, but somewhere in there. Um, I, I was so amped up. I could not sleep. I, I could not sleep. I did all the things I would do. I did some like meditation stuff, which I only do this stuff if I can't sleep. I normally I, I'll, I'll unwind with about maybe 10 to 15 minutes worth of TV. Just something not music related, not work related, just lighthearted, somewhat lighthearted, whatever I'm into, right? Like immerse myself into a story. And that almost always works, right? But, you know, <laughs> sorry, I'm... <laughs> Can I just interject real life into you, into this podcast for a second? I made the mistake of looking at my phone and seeing that I had missed, I had a text from my wife. And I'm like, okay, I should probably, should probably <laughs> look at it. And she sent me a picture of like a ton of bananas. And she's, she goes, got your motherfucking bananas. <laughs> I'm constantly asking for bananas. She's not mad. She's like, I don't think she's mad anyway. <laughs> I'm always asking for bananas because I use bananas. I freeze them and then I put them in smoothies uh, for breakfast. Uh, anyway, <laughs> that's real life. And that I should not be looking at my phone. <sighs> so anyway, I went home. I don't look at social media at night before I go to bed uh, every now and again, maybe I actually do, but like, I'd really try not to. And, and it was no different that night. I think I maybe threw up a couple stories and then no more. I try to go to sleep. I try to watch my show, which right now I'm watching uh fallout almost done with it. I think I'm done with it now actually. But at the time I was watching fallout. Um, I'm not sure, sure. I'm like never quite sure if it was done. Cause I'm like, is that really how it ends? I'm like, I know it's a TV show, but I'm like turning the page to see if there's a, another last page for an ending. And it's no. Okay. All right. There must be a, a next season coming because I thought the whole last episode was going to be this epic battle. And it was like, it ends and you're like, wait, what? Uh, but no spoilers. It's a great show. I, I thought it was well done. And, and 
I was never even, I don't know anything about the video game, but it's based off a of video game. But there's been some great shows lately based off video games. Um, yeah. It's been good. All right, but Fallout was cool. Um, it's tongue-in-cheek. It's not as serious as, as some of the other shows, which I like serious shows, but um, for bedtime, I try not to get too too into the emotions of the human life and experience like it can be too much so but anyway couldn't sleep slept in um and then pretty much had to deal with the ataris canceling again um they weren't going to make it and so we we're like okay do we get the fibs back or do we try to get somebody and we did look into a few a few bands. Um, I won't say which bands, but there was a few bands flying in that we almost had, but their flights were delayed. There was a few other bands locally that uh, one member was out of town, like on the East Coast or Midwest. Uh, another member was from another band was also out of town. And so it's just like we couldn't get another band. And so we're like, you know what? Everybody really liked the Fibs. There's only 10% of the people with tickets to both nights. So most people are seeing the Fibs again for the first time. Let's just do the Fibs. And the Fibs were more prepared that night. They were even better than Friday night. It was a good call. Really stoked. Really glad to have them back. They were stoked to be back. And I think it's going to like jumpstart them to be doing more stuff. Uh, maybe not a ton of shows, but they're going to they're getting into the studio. They're writing new songs. They're going to... They're going to make some things happen, which is so cool. And because of that, because, you know, the, the, the Fibs were playing and the Ataris weren't playing, again, I made a video. Po we posted it online. But those videos don't always get seen by people, especially when you're on your way to the show. You're getting ready. You're doing your thing. You don't always check the band's socials, which you should check the band's socials, socials when you're on your way to the show. But, hey, not everybody does. So I thought I, I better go out and announce the fibs, let everybody know what's happening with the Atari. So I did that again. And because I was doing that, I wanted Sailor to come out and sing it one more time. And we're, this isn't going to be a regular thing that we do at MXPX shows, but because we were local, because we were in Bremerton where my family is, I thought, let's just do it one more time. And, and then people that were at both shows, people that were at one or the other, both get to have that experience. And that's, that's a thing that probably will never happen in the same way ever again. Um, maybe when we're at a party, we'll do it again someday. But, but much like no effects, I think we're, we're not really, you know, planning on doing it. Um, we really did that song to begin with. By the way, if you haven't already heard it, Linoleum by No Effects, we did a cover. And you can listen to it on your streaming. You can add it to your music library. Please do. Um, we did that because we've been doing these these uh, no effects shows. We did the first one uh, in Portland, so we'll, I'll get to that in a second. But it was a way to celebrate no effects in in a cool way, um, and so to be able to actually do it live for people to see it and to have the the video evidence that that meant something. That that was special to me. So shout out to sailor she did so good and she did she she was not nervous the second night she was ready for it and, and ready to rock so it only you know it's funny you know you, we we fail as humans a lot of times and if we can just get that second chance sometimes all you need is a second chance we can really nail it so uh, it was cool so for us mxpx we didn't have a second chance because our set was completely different and uh, we had a good time doing it, but we started with Not Today and and went into a bunch of fun songs. Party Must Be There. We did, uh, you know, we did, um, what was it? We did Ready to Rage, Play It Loud, Secret Weapon, a bunch of punk songs. Ready to Rage went off. We might as well talk about the crowd a little bit, too. Crowd was good for Bremerton. I, I, I don't know what I expect because the Admiral Theater, last time we played there, did not have a real barrier. It was literally one of those barricades that, that you have in a lineup so that you can just pick it up and move it. That's what it was. So we had to have them bring in a barricade and 
more security and these, you know, God bless them. They're not used to doing stage diving type crowds, to be honest. Like punk shows do not happen at this venue, the Admiral Theater in Bremerton. So thank you to the staff at the Admiral. Thanks to the Admiral for having us. You guys did the best you could and you did a pretty good job, but they're not necessarily prepared for the crowd that was going on in the pits. And, you know, I heard that there was some like people getting punched in the, in the pit. And normally you would have like some sort of security go in through there and just make sure that, you know, everything's cool. But, but then again, it's, it's a punk show and it's not always safe. And so you have, if you have a 10 year old and they're getting, you know, there's people getting violent, keep them on the other side of the, the room or, you know, you, you just got to do what you got to do. Honestly, like you can't expect a venue and a securities team to do everything. They're going to miss things. They're gonna, not going to see everything. Um, and that just goes along with my philosophy on life is, is um, organizations, government, doctors, you know, health organizations, health, they're, they're not going to see and do everything for you. You have to do things yourself. You have to have your own agency. That's what secret weapons all about is you are your own secret weapon is just don't rely on other people. You can re sure if you need to rely on your mom or your dad or your, your, your partner, your husband, your wife, whatever on something. Sure. Sure. Do that. But like in general, don't expect these organizations to have your best interest at heart. Even if they try, they will fail. So we got to take care of each other. So when you're there with your kid, you take care of your kid. You don't, you don't assume that the, the security will take care of your kid. You take care of your kid. And, and that's just the best advice I have for, for punk shows and, and staying safe. Be diligent. You know, you're, people are going to get hurt now and again at a punk show. But there are ways to stay away from that violence. And, and I'm not saying don't go in the pit. I'm saying uh, also some of those guys need to be taken out by security or you know but like i said you can't just expect it to be done you have to make it happen yourself sometimes so if somebody you know i'm not i'm not promoting violence or, or suggesting punch a dude but thing dudes can be taken out in in ways that aren't um punching you know sweep the legs johnny do what you gotta do to the guy that won't stop swinging on your kids i i respect that too so uh, the crowd was good. Uh, the crowd was even better than I honestly thought because, you know, you're going to have a lot of people, a lot of Bremerton people that just want to see MXPX because they've heard about us for so long. And they're like, oh, I want to see that. Um, friends of friends, friends of friends of friends of friends, that kind of stuff. They're all, a lot of those people are there. So they want to see the show and they're not the normal punk show attendee. You know, so you can you can imagine it's just a little bit different. If we did these kinds of shows more often, like hometown shows, I think that crowd would be a little bit bit more uh, punk. You know, it'd be like, oh, I, I've been to all these punk shows this year, and this is just another punk show I'm going to. But for this crowd, I think a lot of the people were were, were seeing their one punk show ever, possibly. Um, so because of all that. I really was blown away that Bremerton sang so loud both nights, so loud. Um, you know, what more can I ask for? Sure, you could always. I mean, we could we could ask for more, but but it was great. It was uh, the people. There were so many smiles in the audience, so many loud voices. The pit was going crazy. There was a few people that were probably too violent in that pit, but for the most part, everybody was cool. My buddy almost got arrested. Uh, a buddy of mine went up on stage and he was drunk and he got dared to. And then he didn't know what he was. He didn't do anything. He like patted Tom on the butt and like, <laughs> and then he got hauled off to the side and almost put in a cop car. But the my tour manager said he was cool. Like you can let him go and let him back in. And so the the admiral like main manager guy or whatever gave them the okay that all right don't arrest that guy that guy i wonder if anybody else got, i don't think anybody else got arrested but like i said it's a small town it's a small town venue they do great shows they do big shows but they don't usually do punk shows where people are running up on stage so uh wow it was fun it was, it was uh it's always kind of fun to, to do that kind of stuff but um I, I want to talk about the base toss on Saturday night. So here we are. Uh, 
crazy day. We get going. The base toss happens. I throw my base. I catch the other base. But I catch it, and as I, as I, after I catch it with my left hand, I go to, I go to transfer it, and like get the strap, and just so, I don't know what happened, but either I missed, I missed the transfer of like throwing the base from my left hand to my right, or I was gonna put my hand into the strap, my arm into the strap, and put it on like that. Something just. I missed. I fumbled. I was doing a punk rock move, like a football move, and I I caught the ball, but then I fumbled the ball. In this case, base, but I was stunned. I couldn't believe it, and I was so confused. I was like, wait, I caught that, and and then I almost like in slow motion fumbled it, and so I kind of like laid it down gently. Then I picked it back up really quick, and I was like, we finished the song, and I'm like, hold on. That wasn't a drop. I don't know what happened there. I like fumbled it. It was weird. All right. Glad that's done. Let's move on. And and then I just moved on. Um, so people do call in now, you know, from time to time, now and again. They ask, have you ever dropped a base? And I haven't lately, but that's the closest I've come. And some people might argue. They might say, no, 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 that was a drop because you didn't, you didn't complete it. Like, like you would a football and have it in your complete control. I had the base, and then I threw it again almost. Like I transferred the weight of the base again, but then I missed that little hop, that little... It's almost like you catch the ball with one hand, and then you throw it to your, your other hand, and then that's where you drop the ball. That's what happened. Does that count? It doesn't count as a full-on catch, but it also doesn't count as a drop. Now, is this semantics? Am I just on my side because it's me and I did it? What, what say you? What say you? I really want to know. Um, and, and to be honest, if it's not a big deal, we can stop talking about this right now. All right? If no one calls in, then I'll never bring it up. I'll be like, yeah, I kind of dropped a base one time, but it wasn't really a drop. But then I've dropped bases in the past way worse. Like I've dropped bases completely smashed on the ground. Tuning keys bent, out of tune completely. Yeah, that that happens. That has happened. Hopefully, it won't happen anytime soon. Uh, my bass was out of tune. I tuned it up a little bit. We went on the, our way, and from there, it kind of it kind of can mess up your show. But I feel like I recovered pretty well, and all the footage I've seen, we played great. We really played great. Um, you know, I messed up a few lyrics in one song, but there's always one song where I'll mess up some lyrics. So it's like, okay, well, that was my one song. We're good. But every other song, solid, strong, no mess ups. And so, uh, you know, as a, it's probably a little too much inside baseball for everybody, but I always expect to do way worse. And I did. I did great. So <laughs> as a human, uh, I did great. As a professional, um, entertainer, I think I did exactly what I needed to do, which is I did my job. Um, everybody loved the show. We gave a lot of energy. Tom was great on guitar. Chris was great on guitar. Yuri was better than ever on drums. He was tight as nails. And um, that was, you know, that was Saturday night. Friday and Saturday night, Yuri was excellent. Um, and I think everybody was, to be honest. And in my own head, I'm like, oh, I didn't do so good. But then everybody else is like, no, you did great. And then I'm like, you did great. And they're like, I didn't do that good. But it's because you're, you're always your worst enemy. You're your own worst critic. And it's no different when you're in a punk band. It's just the way it is. So really, when I stay, take a step back, I realize, no, I did, I did good. I know where I can improve here and here and here. But that's not something that anybody notices. That's not something that takes away from the excellence of the show. It's just something that can always be improved upon. And that doesn't change no matter who you are in life. The biggest comedians sit down and go, what can I improve about my performance? They're doing stadiums. We're not doing stadiums yet. Maybe someday. But you know what? We play, well, we have done stadiums, I guess, if you, if you can't festivals. So yeah, we probably will be doing stadiums 
you know, in the near future. Who knows? That's not what's important here. The fact is, is the doesn't matter how big you get, you're still going to make mistakes. There's still room for improvement. Mistakes will be made. All right. All right. Uh, let's talk about food. Let's talk about food because food um, is at the forefront of everything we do as humans. So when we're in PX Mecca, where do you guys eat? Did you have any favorite places? Did you have a place that we were like, I need to go back there and order the same exact thing again next time I'm there? Like there's places we go to, and you've heard me talk about it, the pizza place in New York, um, the, the, um, the dim sum place that I had in Denver. Amazing. Going to go back there. Is there anywhere you went in Bremerton that you're like, I got to go back? I'll tell you some of my favorites because I have some favorites. Um, we'll start with, with, uh, we'll start with restaurants, restaurant. Uh, I'd say the boat shed is one of my favorite places. I always love to go there with the family, sit out on the deck on a nice day, get a cocktail, have a nice meal. The boat sheds right on the water on the, on the Minette side of Bremerton. It's in Minette. Um, that's a good spot. But if you're downtown, if you were at the Admiral, I would say places to eat down there. I haven't been to this place, but Cafe Alera has some of the best looking sandwiches I've ever seen. And it's the it, the exact type of sandwich place that I would love to go to. The reason why I haven't gone is because it's in my hometown and I don't eat out almost ever. And I certainly don't eat lunch. Um, I pretty much eat breakfast and then I'll eat dinner and that's it. So someday it'll work out and I'll, I'll go there. But uh, there's... Um, there's the South Pacific solid bar it has good food downtown, um, down by the ferry. There's uh, the horse and cow that's on fourth street. If you're going to go to the horse and cow, you might as well go play some, some, uh, arcade games at quarters. Cause, uh, that's a local arcade that I love and it actually does take real quarters. Um, but they have modern games. They have, they have, they have uh, pinball, some older games, but they have a ton of modern games. They're always switching them out. Anyway, a little shout out commercial for, for quarters, my boy, Greg. Um, so where else, where else, um, downtown? Oh, um, the Thai place on sixth street, Noah's Ark. That's not the Thai place, but Noah's Ark is awesome. It's just a, a mom and pop place where you can get a burger, a sandwich, a Philly cheesesteak, um, yeah, things like that. All right, here it is. Um, Sabadi. So Sabadi strongly suggests go there for Thai food. Amazing. It's right on sixth street. Um, and then, uh, happy teriyaki is pretty decent for teriyaki. Although things change. And then Spiro's I always love Spiro's Italian pasta, pizza, salads used to work there. Um, I didn't work at the place. The one I go to usually is the West Bremerton Spiros. Um, that's not where I worked. I worked in Silverdale. And then I worked, sometimes I, I worked at the old one that is no longer there in East Bremerton. So, um, but as far as, as far as pizza goes, um, Toad House Pizza on the East Side is probably my favorite pizza place around here. Kind of tied with Evergreen Pizza. And then if you want like a cheap bar pizza that's really, really good, Sirens in West Bremerton has great pizza. Um, geez, Mexican food, uh, Mescalitos, downtown Bremerton. We went, the whole band and crew went and ate there Thursday night before the shows. Um, it was good. Yeah, no, no complaints. It's kind of like fancy Mexican. So it's like, um, you know, fancy sauces that they like sp you sprinkle on the top or whatever that it's like, Oh, that's just uh, sour cream, but it looks fancy. That's the kind of place, <laughs> but that, that place is good. Um, El Balcon is good for burritos. There's, um, there's a few other places, but, but honestly, I don't eat a lot downtown. And, and, uh, and when I do, I'm always like, where should we go? Where should we go? So I, I want to hear from you guys, what you think, um, those are a few of my favorites. Um, if you're getting further out and you want a good uh, Bloody Mary with a cheeseburger on it, go to the garage. That's on. That's like just when you're about to hit Chico Way. 
Yeah, that should go away. So the garage is a, a nice little dive bar, biker bar, but has great food, like really good food for what it is. Um, 19th hole, if you go past, if you're on Chico Way and you, you need to stop, you can eat at the 19th hole. It's a bar and grill, and it's right on the golf course there, uh, not too far from where my parents live. Um, yeah, I think that's that's good. Big Apple Diner, you can always stop in for, for diner food. Uh, Big Apple Diner is right next to the garage. These are all driving distance from where the Admiral was, so not walking from the ferry. Um, if you if you're eating downtown, I would I would stick with. Um, I mean, there's a bunch of places. Anthony's is downtown. Um, that's uh, they're a corporation, but they're they're kind of like a small chain. I would say like a, a Washington State type only restaurant. But all the people that work there are local, so I, I like to support local businesses and restaurants. And if it's good, it's good. So there you go. Um, and that's about it for food. I, I'm sure there, there, I could go on and on, but I don't think I need to. I think we're good on that. I just want to hear from you guys. Call in. The number is 360-830-6660. Leave me a voicemail. Tell me where you ate, what you had. If there's something so good, you need to have it again. I need to know that place. What am I missing? All right. So uh, night two, Saturday night, we had Rev from the Drowns. Uh, he's a Seattle musician. Um, he's been in a bunch of bands over the years, Fireworks, um, a bunch of other things. But the Drowns have really come into their own as a band. They're a street punk band. They have a lot of anthemic choruses and like his voice is so big and so deep and rough and it's it's really cool so we had him come out and, and sing stay up all night and he hyped up the crowd so great and uh we're gonna do something with him at some point again because the rev was so cool to hang with he's a, he's a great dude speaking of great dudes we also had jeff bedker uh he showed up he's the singer of 90 pound wuss and he is one of our good friends one of our best friends really he's he's a homie he's always hanging out uh, he's, he's the guy that's welcome backstage anytime he's welcome in our studio anytime, even if it's not anything about him, he can just come and hang. That's Jeff Bedker. And it was great to have him back. He came in saying theme fiasco screamed on that. And then he sang the whole lead part for fist versus tact, which is so much fun because I get to just be a bass player and get crazy. This is what it must have been like for Brian Baker to play in minor threat. That was that was my vibe. Loved it. So uh, Saturday night was awesome. I felt so good about it. We got done with it. I actually slept a couple hours. Once once everybody everybody was partying that night, there was the bridge blast in Bremerton where they set up all these fireworks on the bridge and blast it off. Or I think that's what they do. Or maybe they're blasting off of boats, but it's the Bremerton bridge blast. And it was just chaos in a good way in Bremerton that night. So... I just enjoyed it a little bit, let it die down, did my end of the night stuff, got a couple hours sleep, and then we were off to Portland. That's right, Portland, and then I'll wrap this baby up. Uh, Portland is going to be, it's going to be wild, but we got to get there first, so we had to leave at 6 a.m. in the morning from the studio, and boom, we were gone. We were carpooling. We had like three vehicles with us, four vehicles counting Yuri, because Yuri brought his kids. Um but we made it pretty good. There was not a lot of traffic. Everybody was freaking out about the traffic, including myself. Oh, it's going to, you know, they're closing off I-5. Turns out they closed off I-5 south of where we were going. So it didn't even matter. Southbound I-5, baby. Um, so we get there. We do our sound check. We load in all that and then get to get, to get you know, checked into the hotel, get some, a little bit of rest, and then back to the venue. We just hung out with all the no effects people, the crew, bunch of other bands good riddance was there face to face was there it was great to see them um cigar was uh, those canadian guys they were there um it was really it was a really just a good sort of third day after we had spent so much time with friends and family in bremerton we got to sort of do a little it was almost like a a field trip version of of what we had just done it was different because we were cel we got to celebrate no effects then you know and our set was off the hook. Like, you know, you're always like, I hope people like us because it's not us headlining now. We're opening for other people's fans. So 
the crowd in Portland went off. They really, really showed us so much love. Let's Ride sounded so loud. Um, the pit was huge. The dust clouds were just choking me out. It was insane. So we we played so tight. Yuri was so tight on the drums. I sang great. Uh, all the lack of sleep is the worst thing for a voice. You add dust and no water to that, and it gets bad. But honestly, mentally, I was just thinking about my voice, thinking about singing well, conserve, do that. And I did it. And and, and the show was great. Um, I know I'm probably a little too much in my head in this podcast talking about kind of how I was thinking and feeling, especially when you kind of second guess yourself or when you're worried that you're not going to be good, that you're not going to sing well. That's not anything people want to hear. That's not something that that a, a listener of a band that they admire wants to know about usually. I mean, a few people. People are weird. but And, the, and if you want to know about it, cool. That's it's all good too. Uh, but what I'm saying is most people want to just hear the good things. They want to hear the positivity. They want to hear, they want to hear that, that life is, is going to be great. <laughs> and, and it is, but it's not going to be great unless we really try to fix the problems that we have. And, and we have to, we have to go through the obstacle. We have to tackle the obstacle instead of run away from it. And unfortunately through that obstacle is pain, 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 and more pain but it's the only way we get to happiness. It's the only way we get to smile. I mean, you can temporarily smile, but if you're if you have that obstacle in front of you, that smile's going away real quick, right? So that's what I mean by it's just the only way. It's through whatever it is you got to do. Sometimes it's do we got to leave at six a.m. because we think there's going to be traffic and we're going to have the roads closed, and even though it's closed south of a uh, south of where we're going, it might still be trafficy where we are that's just another obstacle, right? And we just get through that. And um, when when you leave all those things out, you see this pretty rosy picture of of a perfect, perfectly scripted scenario. Oh, we had these shows. We put them on sale. They sold out. We did these two shows. Uh, we The Ataris got sick, food poisoning apparently from Chris Rowe where he was so weak he couldn't hold a guitar and couldn't stand up. Okay, so we got the fibs to play. Everybody was happy. So many locals were really happy because they got to see a local band. I know fans of the Ataris were not happy, but there's like all these good things that happen because of one bad thing, you know? So, yeah, I, all I'm saying is nothing is ever easy. But once you do the hard thing, you can get to the good thing. You get to the good thing. Because if you skip the hard part and just try to get to the smile, it's a fake smile, you know, and it doesn't feel good. And we, we realize that. So in order for MXPX or anybody for that matter to be successful and to be happy and to, to do well, we have to do the hard things. We have to go through those obstacles. We have to get up early. We have to stay late. We have to say hi to every single fan that we can. We have to treat people with respect even when we're tired. Um, that's that's what it's all about. So uh, anybody that was part of that weekend, this this weekend, thank you. I want to thank No Effects. Fat Mike was awesome. Uh, all the guys in No Effects were so cool, and it was cool to see them, and they were happy to see us. And um, you know. It's a it's a wild life, you know. I grew up listening to punk rock, and and before MXPX was not anything, I was listening to Rancid. I was listening to No Effects, listening to Bad Religion. I was listening to Suicidal Tendencies. I mean, the Violent Femmes. Oh my God, love the Violent Femmes. They're not even really a punk band, but they influence me so much, and to be. To be on the same shows, to be in the same trailers, to be in the same business, I feel I feel grateful, and I feel like it's because we haven't given up. It's because it's not easy to to be here. If you're here still after all these years, in any one of these bands, there's that's respect. I respect you. I respect you, and I hope I don't demand any respect. I don't care, but. 
I respect people when I see them and they've been around a long time. I, that's respect because it is not easy to do this. Um, it's not easy to do this because it's exhausting. Now, I'm not saying that we're not successful. We're crazy successful. Uh, you know, we've taken chances. You have to take chances. Um, I don't like to talk about the hard times because nobody wants to hear how hard it is. They just want to hear that it was successful. And I honestly... When things are hard and then they're successful, that's the most success. That's that's it means so much more to me. Um, but to be honest, I would rather have the ticket sales go very easily. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, like put up a sale, put a show on sale, sold out, done. I mean, that does happen, but it's just like it. it it's never a given. It's never a given. I never take that for granted. Each time we sell out, I'm surprised. It's why I'm amazing thank you so thank you for all the love thank you for all your support thank you for listening to mxpx thanks for coming out to see the shows wherever you can um and if we haven't gotten to your area yet it's not that we don't want to it's just we can't yet for whatever reason there's real reasons i'm sure uh but uh i love you all uh, i respect you all i thank you for for just keeping going in your life one way or the other, things get wonky. So you, you have to have your hands on the wheel, eyes on the road. Because um, when we take our hands off the wheel and we put our eyes off the road, the car goes crazy. I mean, it's just maybe maybe you don't feel it drifting, but it's drifting. And pretty soon it'll crash. So I'm going to do my best to keep my eyes on the road. And this last weekend was a great, great reminder that life is good life is precious life is uh nothing to take for granted you know px mecca was uh, i hope everything you wanted it to be um i mean we didn't have any any rides or anything like carnival rides that that would be a bit much for that that event but it was a punk show in in our hometown bremerton and we really really enjoyed that we really did and then Portland, amazing. Had a great night. Great, great experience just hanging with everybody, taking it all in. So thanks to everybody involved. Again, um, call me, 360-830-6660. That's it. Until next week. Um, thanks to Bob McKnight for producing. Um, we'll, get to, we'll get to voicemails next time. Yeah, I think this is a this is a good way to end it. I didn't I didn't plan on only talking about the weekend, but it's my podcast. <laughs> All right, love y'all. Peace. Mm -hmm.